A cardiac catheterization laboratory, or cath lab, is a specialised area in a hospital where the consultant-led cath lab team performs diagnostic and interventional procedures. Cath labs are staffed by a team of specialists, including consultant cardiologists, nurses, radiographers and specialist cardiac physiologists. A cath lab is quite simply the clinical environment where we safely carry out procedures on people's hearts that don't involve generally cutting patients open to get to the heart. So we need to access the heart from remote blood vessels and through those blood vessels we pass tubes that we call catheters, hence the term cath lab. The biggest chunk of our work here in the cath labs is dealing with heart attacks. There's lots of other conditions we deal with in cath labs. Increasingly we're doing lots of structural work on heart valves as well as complex device procedures to help support heart rhythms. And also we have to deal with the consequences of patients with long-term heart conditions in patients who have had devices that may need removing, for example, and taking them out again. This cath lab at Leeds Teaching Hospital's NHS Trust features a Philips Azurian system, but you'll find the same kind of equipment in every cath lab. There's an angiography x-ray system, a patient procedure table and patient monitors. The layout of this kit is designed to help staff and patient workflow. The kit that we use in the cardiac cath labs usually involves a specialised x-ray system that will help illuminate arteries and veins and the problems they pose, as well as specialist catheters and equipment intervention tools like stents, pacemakers and prosthetic heart valves. There are a number of procedures that might take place in a cath lab, including ablation, angiogram or angioplasty, transcatheter aortic valve implantation, and the implantation of cardiac devices. Every procedure starts with the team going through the World Health Organization checklist. Case plan, so fourth time redo procedure, but we'll set it up like all the others. Ultrasound guided access to seven French sheaths left femoral vein with ultrasound This is a core set of safety checks which ensures the whole team understands what's about to happen. It was developed to decrease errors and adverse events and increase teamwork and communication. The World Health Organization checklist basically protects the patient and us, making sure that we have the correct patient for the correct procedure, making sure that all those checks that have been followed from admission to the point of being accepted into the cath lab have been completed. The main risks would be um, obviously that we don't have the right patient, that the patient is not consented for the procedure and that the patient has any allergies to things that we could give them like the contrast. Catheter ablation is used to treat abnormal heart rhythms or arrhythmias. It's usually performed when the arrhythmia symptoms are interfering with a person's quality of life. Catheter ablation involves uh, navigating a catheter to the heart, to the area that's causing the abnormal heart rhythms. Through the catheter we can deliver hot or cold energy to resolve the abnormal heart rhythm. Some catheter ablations can be fairly simple, can take up to 30 minutes or so, but some are much more complex and can take up to several hours. An angiogram is a type of x-ray that helps doctors to diagnose heart problems by using contrast dye to highlight the coronary arteries. It's often followed by an intervention such as an angioplasty or percutaneous coronary intervention. It's a minimally invasive procedure that involves a local anaesthetic usually to the wrist and there you would navigate again a catheter up to the heart through the arteries and using contrast you would inject under the x-ray, illuminating the coronary arteries, which will then show us where the narrowings and the blockages are. If the coronary angiogram reveals a significant narrowing or a blockage, we're able to treat that by delivering a guide wire past that narrowing, and along that wire, we would take balloons and stents to that lesion and inflate them to get rid of the narrowing. Transcatheter aortic valve implantation, or TAVI, can help alleviate symptoms of breathlessness, 
chest pain and reduce the risk of heart failure by fitting a new valve into the heart. A TAVI procedure is for patients that have aortic stenosis and that means that their valve does not open and close as it should do. The valve is leaking um, and causing the patients to have a number of different symptoms. It could be shortness of breath, syncope, which could cause them to feel faint um, and lightheaded and sometimes collapse. And that procedure involves, again, a minimally invasive approach um, via their um, femoral artery, uh, where we, under a sedation approach, we implant a tissue valve into their aorta um, and hopefully alleviate them of some of their symptoms. Fitting a cardiac device is one of the most common forms of heart surgery. Your cardiac device will work by keeping your heart rate and rhythm normal. So patients that are having symptoms of um, collapse, dizziness, irregular heartbeats in terms of too fast or too slow um, would require some sort of cardiac device potentially to be implanted to help their electrical system function as everyone else's does. So patients would come to a cath lab just like this. They would um, be awake during the procedure. It would all be done under local anaesthetic and we would make a small incision in their left upper access of their chest um, of about uh, three centimetres, maybe four. And using the x-rays, it would help us identify the anatomy and we will access the veins in their heart by putting these leads that are going to be attached to a box that will sit underneath the skin in a little pocket and that will control the electrical impulses in their heart for whatever reason it is needed. The angiographic x-ray systems that are central to the procedures carried out in a cath lab all use ionising radiation. This allows visualisation of the heart's anatomy and the devices we put in them. It's not just patients who are affected, Cardiologists and the cath lab team are also exposed during procedures. So it's important that everyone working in the cath lab understands the risks of radiation exposure and how to reduce them. X-rays are a brilliant tool to see all the structures are in the heart as well as the body like you can see bones and stuff but in the cath lab we just look at the heart however there are some risks that come with using x-rays so it's really important that we make sure the patient remains safe as well as the staff with regards to the patient it is the consultant's responsibility to ensure that the benefits of doing the procedure with the x-rays outweigh the risks to the patient everybody that works in the cath lab will have radiation training before they're allowed to work in it so that they all understand the risks involved, what protections are in place to protect them as a staff member as well as the patient. There are a number of tools and checks that help keep staff safe. The catheter labs are fitted with warning lights highlighting when the x-rays are active to ensure only authorised and protected staff enter. Every team member wears a lead apron which helps protect them from the x-rays. Cardiologists also wear radiation safety glasses, which reduces the amount of radiation to the eye. There's a lead shield, which is attached to the patient table that protects the lower limbs of the cardiologist from x-rays. Another mobile lead shield is placed between the image intensifier and the cardiologist to reduce the x-ray exposure to the upper body, head and neck. The cardiologists wear protective glasses which have a dosimeter on them so we can monitor the radiation dose to the eyes. I, as a radiographer, just wear a whole body dosimeter and that sits under my lead apron and monitors how much radiation I get throughout my career. The dosimeters are sent away regularly for testing to make sure that nobody receives a harmful dose of radiation. Proper infection control is incredibly important in a cath lab. So like anywhere in a hospital, we like to maintain our hygiene and cleanliness to a very high standards. This is to protect the patients from any infections that they can get from the environment, from us or from the procedure just in general. We will drape the patient using sterile drapes and gowns. We will glove and gown um, and scrub um, like in a theatre and we will use single use items as per patient so we don't reuse um, equipment per se, everything is patient, single patient use. So this minimises the risk of the patients ending up with an infection because of something we've used or just the environment. Hand washing and surgical scrubbing are the most important procedures for preventing infections. Caps, masks, gowns and gloves 
all help to protect the patient by maintaining a sterile field. So the cath lab setup at Leeds is six cath labs, so it's a big unit where we're delivering in excess of 7,000 procedures a year, so it's busy. And commonly in a day we'll deliver anything between 30 and 50 procedures in one day. We are absolutely focused on investing in our people. We cannot do what we do without our team members. We deliver high quality care. We do things here that not many other places can do, but we're always pushing for that extra little bit, that extra 1%. And for the last nearly 25 years, I've never not wanted to come to work, which I'm very lucky to be able to say.